tarantula's on its back. Maybe it's dead. Hello Tarantula lovers and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. I'm Alex. I'm coming to you again from my kitchen until I find a better place. Um, as a teacher, I tend to get that a lot. I have tarantulas in my classroom. I have students who observe them and every now and then I have a tarantula that will go into a molt and a lot of the times the students will tell me, Miss G, your tarantula is dead. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's dead. It's on its back. So um, this is one of those things that if you have been around tarantulas, if you know about tarantulas, then it's something that you expect. You even get excited about it. It's understandable to think that your tarantula might be dead if you're not accustomed to this behavior. Uh, molting is a process that all tarantulas go through and uh, even pros like Rob C. I've seen one of his videos where he thought that one of his tarantulas was dead because it quit moving for a very long period of time and uh, he decided to wait rather than throw it out and sure enough it molted. It just took a very long time to do so. Even if you're new to the hobby, you probably have done some research and you know and to expect that tarantulas are going to molt, but it's always, you know, a, a little bit of a shock when you look in there and you see that your tarantula is flat on its back. Now, of course, you're going to know this is going to happen. Um, some of you may even be familiar with the term instar. What instar means is basically the time between molts, the period of time between molts. Now, when a tarantula is born or when it's in its egg sac, um, it will be an egg for a little while and then it will develop little legs on it. And at this point is where you call it, uh, they call it eggs with legs or EWL in the uh, hobby. Um, now, this is not an instar, but when that eggs with those eggs with legs turn black and then they molt and they turn into tiny little tarantulas that is the first instar that's when they they refer to it as the first instar and a lot of people in the hobbyists tend to keep track of these instars um, you take you keep track of the instar basically to tell how much the tarantula is growing how big it's getting and you usually quit at the time period when it reaches maturity. Now males will stop molting once they mature and you will definitely know it's a male at that time period. Females will continue to, to molt throughout their lives because you have some species um, like the Gramostola rosea from my last video, they can live up to 20, 30 years. So once they reach matur maturity, this is not the end of their molt cycle. They will continue to molt periodically, although it will slow down as they get older. Um, some tarantulas will go one, maybe two, three years before they will molt again. So when they're young, they will molt frequently but as they start getting older they tend to slow down and they will molt less frequently as they get older especially when they're in maturity so why do hobbyists get excited when their tarantulas start molting well for one thing it's kind of an indicator that you're doing your job it, it lets you know that you're taking care of your animal and that your animal is growing and um, this lets you know that it's getting ready to molt because it has grown bigger than its exoskeleton now when you're talking about um, insects arthropods arachnids in this case um, they have an exoskeleton whereas you and i have an endoskeleton endo meaning that it's inside your body um, arachnids and arthropods and insects will have their skeleton on the outside which is why we refer to it as an exoskeleton this exoskeleton does not grow with them so when their bodies grow their exoskeleton gets too small for them so they have to molt it they have to shed it off and they grow they come out of that molt and they will actually be larger in size. In some cases, it almost seems like they double in size in certain species because they get so much bigger after their molt. It's very noticeable. 
Another thing that you will tend to notice is that their colors will start to change. A lot of spiderlings are very drab in color. If you, you know, they tend to be kind of a brownish color or a grayish color and don't have a whole lot of coloration to it and they definitely won't have their adult colors on them. And that doesn't happen until later on. So every molt that they that they have, you're going to start to see some of that color show through. They're going to start getting their adult coloration until they finally do uh, get their adult coloration. Now this doesn't necessarily happen at maturity. This will happen throughout their young juvenile stages. They will reach a point where they get their adult colors. Another cool thing about your tarantula molting is that it allows you to observe them a little bit better and you can take a look at them real close and do kind of a wellness check on them. Make sure that you look around the lungs, you look around the mouth to make sure that there's nothing wrong. Um, some uh, tarantulas can develop or can contract nematodes and these are very harmful to your tarantula and a lot of times they can you can see foaming around the mouth and you can actually see them wiggling around in the mouth and that's not a good thing. So you can actually check for that while they're molting. Another thing I like to do is um, I use it as an opportunity to become more knowledgeable about tarantulas. Uh, I do photography on the side, so I'm always taking pictures of my tarantulas. So I use this as an opportunity to take a picture of the underside of them. Some people get really good at, at being able to sex their tarantulas ventrally, meaning on their abdomen, on, their, on the bottom part of their abdomen. And uh, you got people out there that are so good they can actually look at a tarantula on the underside and tell you whether it's male or female. Now, I'm nowhere near that point, but I would like to be, and I will do comparison shots. I'll take a picture of, say, a male, and if I have a female, I'll compare the two so that I can look at them and see what the differences are between the two, and maybe someday get to the point where I'm that good, where I can sex them ventrally. And then probably the main thing that most hobbyists get excited about when their tarantula is molting is this is one of those opportunities where you can actually sex your tarantula. If your tarantula is large enough, um, the molt, if you're careful enough with it when you pull it out, you can stretch it out and you can look at the inside of the abdomen and you can see between the book lungs whether or not it is male or female. There are indicators there that can show you whether this is a male or a female. Now, I'll show you that later on some pictures that I took of the tarantula molting. Okay, so what I have here is chromatopelma cyanopubescence, and as I mentioned earlier, um, spiderlings, or what we call slings in the hobby, are kind of drab in color when they are young, when they're spiderlings. This is an exception to that, and there are other exceptions. This is not the only one. This is Chromatopelma cyanopubescens, and they are kind of orangey in color. And they have orange legs and they have some orange banding markings on their abdomen. Um, and I mentioned earlier about instars. Uh, I tend to leave the, the the molts inside here so that you can see. Uh, so as you can see here, it has one molt there and another molt right here. Um, this one recently molted. I tried to feed it, but it hasn't eaten yet. Um, so this one is probably in its fourth instar. Now, a lot of hobbyists tend to keep track of their instars, but we tend to get a little bit lazy after a while. Um, so it's not like you're gonna keep track of the instars all the time. Um, after a while, it becomes more a thing of size. So when people sell their tarantulas, if you see online or anywhere else, um, you'll tend to see, some people will say it's in its you know second instar or it's in its fourth instar or fifth instar, but some people will start to sell them by the inches or centimeters, depending on where you're from. So you might see a, a spider laying for two, that's two inches long or three inches and so on. Um, as long as it's not the size of a mature animal or mature tarantula, then you know it's a juvenile or it's a spiderling depending on its size. So this is Lasiodora parahibana, and uh, it is known as the salmon pink bird eater or just salmon bird eater. And uh, it's a, it tends to be a very large species. It's a pretty fast growing 
And when it started molting, I decided I was going to go ahead and do a time lapse video of it. It was a pretty lengthy process. Um, it stayed on its back for about an hour before it even started moving. So, like I said before, it's pretty easy to, to think, oh, maybe it's dead this time. Maybe it isn't molting and you know but the thing is to be patient you want to be patient with your tarantula this is something that they go through and they're at their most vulnerable at this time period now uh, a terrestrial like this would normally do this molting in un, in a burrow underground and where it won't be in any kind of danger from anything any predators outside now because i we have them in our enclosures then they tend to do them out in the open so that you can see them um, but a lot of times this is done in secret so uh, you know it's not something that you see all the time so it's pretty cool to get to see something that goes from beginning to end like i did on this time lapse and and just kind of speed the whole process up the whole process from the time that it laid on its back and it stayed on there for an hour and then the rest of it was about two hours so i've compressed it into a two minute segment of video blah 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 shut up and show the dang time lapse You may have noticed on the time lapse that you see a pair of tweezers reach in and pull the mold out. Um, I did. I don't normally don't do that because I like to let them molt and and just be undisturbed while they're doing it. But I did pull it for the sake of the video so that it could sex it and and hopefully get a successful sexing um, for the video so that I could show you. So here's the picture of the molt. And um, what you're looking at here is the epigynum. And uh, you're going to look in this area between what they call the book lung. And um, what you're looking for, if it is a female, there's going to be a definite flap there, what they call the uh, epigastric furrow. And uh, you're going to see these two little tiny tubes that, that are called spermathicae. And, and this is where the female will store sperm uh, in, when it breeds. Now, in this particular case, there is an absence of that, that flap that you should see there and the spermathicae. What you're seeing here is the male gonopore. And um, uh, probably the most telling thing is the orthordial membrane. So these are things that you can definitely see. So it's a boy. Um, this is not something that in the hobby people like to hear. So mine's a boy. Um, I've got another salmon bird eater. So hopefully the other one will be a female. Um, I don't know. You know, it's just luck of the draw. So we'll see.
Okay, so this is my little guy here, my male, um, Lasidor Parahimana. And, uh, you know, as you can see, his colors are nice and dark. He's got that nice pink fur going on there, and uh, it's starting to show a lot more of its adult coloring. It's nowhere near that yet. Uh, they tend to get these little stripes on them, and he hasn't gotten that yet. But um, he's probably three inches now. He was about two and a half inches. So he's done a little bit of growing, and he'll continue to grow. Males will tend to mature a lot faster, so probably within the next year or two he will be mature and ready to breed um, hopefully I'll have someone that I can give them to or sell them to so that they can use them to use him to produce more um, of this species hope you enjoyed my video I'd like to give a special thank you to Chad Campbell from the American Tarantula Society group on Facebook he provided me the pictures of the uh, egg and the egg with legs um, he's an excellent photographer I see lots of beautiful photographs of tarantulas that he posts if you want to check him out I'm gonna post his uh, Flickr uh, link at the bottom of the video and uh, once again, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to give a special thank you to Chad Campbell from the uh, American Tarantula. Tarantula. Tarantulas, the Tarantula Society.